<laughs> We're back. Final round. Argon versus Lone Digger. We've got, in fact, we've got Titan Stompy. Big green decks coming to play. Last round. Let's get into it. Yeah, I'm uh, excited to see how this pans out. It'll also be interesting, too, because this is the first time we've seen uh, Chalice today as well. Yeah. So an update on what we said earlier. Shark tokens from Ikoria, three fifty a pop. Goats, if you've got some, sell them. If you got them, hold on to them. They are three dollars yeah. a piece. There we go. Lone Digger looks like he's just starting off with a once upon a time, just right there. Yep, I think that's the best play for him, especially when you oh. know what's sitting across from you. Oh, yeah, is that is that, that the new is that the new tattoo art card? That's the secret layer tattoo uh, ink on Nexus. Oh, what a beautiful, beautiful card. Yeah, this is super nice for sure. Yeah, sees the Ink Moth Nexus, plays the Ink Moth Nexus. Says go. Just a Caracas and pass. Yeah. Interestingly, the Caracas says absolutely nothing about the deck. <laughs> Nope. At that moment, you're thinking you're playing against three, four, five different decks right now. Um, yeah. Or potentially death unless and taxes. they know each other. Unless they really know each other, they could be staring down the barrel of the death and taxes. They could be looking at even Delver that puts into a Caracas on turn one. Yeah, um, like yeah, Jeff Guy Delver or something. Yeah, absolutely. So we've got the Ink Moth Nexus. We've got a Trop. Lone Digger's going to start playing up. I have lost enough times to this deck with Lone Digger. I think he's going to have a very good game one, um, unless we see in a very aggressive challenge. Uh, chalice uh, from uh, Argon. Yeah. Even then, with the Ink Moth Nexus down two, that still is going to add up to not a lot. Oh, here's three. Do we get to see it? Do we get to see it? I hope so. Yes. There's a three ball. Yes. Main deck three balls. I love this. Fight over this hard, Digger. You're going to be very sad if this resolves. Nothing better than a turn two Transphere. That is going to see a daze here, though. Yeah. You you absolutely have to do everything you can. Like Even if it costs every card in your hand, do it, because that, that Transphere is going to kill the end deck. Absolutely. Um, All Argon needs is one answer to that uh, Inkblot Nexus, and then you basically can't do anything. Yeah, absolutely. I think that was a great thing for Argon to try and jam. Love seeing my uh, my favorite card, Ancient Tomb, there. Um, does put uh, does put some pressure on things. I run Ancient Tomb personally in uh, D&T. allows me to speed up the clock against any opponent, especially if we see a lot of fast decks now. Yeah. Because we're getting a bayou here, so this is probably another one. Let's see it. Slam another one. Ah, there's a draw. Oh, right at the Elysian Grove. So the jig could be up here. Yeah. I think after seeing um, Ancient Tomb Krakus, you still are probably wondering what the hell you're playing against. Um, but Dryad really, really puts the, the mark that you're playing some sort of big green creature deck, um, yeah. allowing them to play a second land per turn. Okay, I was just going to say, I was like, didn't Argon just play land? But yeah, yeah no. Dryad allows you to do that. <laughs> yeah, Dryad is, there's a reason why the card's really, really good. Um, yeah, yeah, allows you to play additional land. Oh, nice Grand Prix promo <clears throat> for us. We love those. Yeah. I think we're, I think we're just going to uh, green Sun Zenith for one here, maybe grab a Dryad Harbor, just a ramp. Like they're ramp. doing it for zero, actually. They untap the Karakas, yeah. so. Yeah, so grab a Dryad Harbor here, just more ramp here. Yep, yep, there it is. Yeah. Yeah, Mike, yeah, another $10 standard card, indeed. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I haven't played standard in years. I, after, after Arclight, I, I have a personal love for Arclight Phoenix in my heart. I love the deck. I love everything it did. It did, a, it got a lot of hate with the Crackling Drake, uh, Enigma Drakes in uh, Omnum Ket Standard and all that stuff. But man, when they banned Faithless Suiting and Modern, I cried. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm actually pretty sure, thinking about it, that the very last time I actually played in a standard event, I'm pretty sure it was when 
uh, Eldritch Moon was the new set. Wow. So, so second Emrakul and all that fun stuff. Yeah. Here we go. So we see an attack with the Ink Moth into an Invigorate. Is this a Berserk? I Off would suspect. Green yeah, I would suspect. There it is. Yeah. yeah. I believe that's what, 8, 9? Or no, that's, that's straight 10. That's, that's game. 10. That's just straight 10, yeah. Yeah, so for, our magic, so for our Magic players who may not understand it, Infect is a special way to win the game. Uh, you only have to do 10 Infect damage to poison your opponent to death instead of the normal 20 of natural damage to an opponent. Um, it doesn't matter how much life they gain, how much life they've had over the game. The second you do 10 Infect in a game, that game is over. And so we saw their Lone Digger with the great combo of putting 10, putting 10 Infect onto um, that Ink Moth Nexus there and just going to town. Exactly. So for sideboards here, um, for in the case of Argon Platypus on Titan Stompy here, yeah. Uh, sideboard, we have one Ghost Quarter, one Wasteland, two Carpet of Flowers, one Elvis Reclaimer, one Black Roof, two Plague like Engineer, two Reclamation Stage, two Force of Vigor, and three Leyline of the Void. So... Uh, I'm liking the Plague Engineer. I do too. Um, it allows them to name... It allows them to name Human, which uh, kills eight of the creatures they have. Uh, allows them to name Elf Warrior, um which cuts off Glistener Elf. They could even hit um, a Blink Moth and kill the Blink Moth before it even has a chance to swing. Um, Indeed. So I think that's definitely the card we can see come in. Um, I'm I not could also sure. definitely see Ghost Quarter and Wasteland being good here, though, at the same time. Yeah, absolutely. We didn't see any basics coming from Lone Digger there. Um, Wasteland and Ghost Quarter just immediately shut those cards off. Excuse me. <clears throat> instantly allowing that card to um, shut those cards off. On the Infect side here, we have a pretty similar kind of things here, some some pretty similar cards. Bajuka Bog, Caracas, one Savannah, three Swords to Plowshare, four Veil of Summer, two Rest in Peace, two Teferi Time Raveler, and one Force of Will. One Force of Vigor. Sorry, I misspoke there. Um, I... I think... I, like I think swords. we see the swords. Yeah, the swords is a really good card here. Um, could because you're not really worried about their life total if you're swinging infect. Yeah, indeed. Um, I think we could also see Veil of Summer for protection of his creatures. Um, yes. I'm not really wondering about. I don't really think there's too much else to really uh, move out there. Yeah, um, I, I just think that the Swords is probably where you want to be in any case because those Dryads can just run away. Same thing with the Primeval Titan as well. Like, you can't let the Primeval Titan attack no matter what. Yeah, absolutely. There's a reason why the card... When a card's so good, it's been in Commander. You can't really let it sit there. Um, prime exactly. time, for those of you who don't know, once it enters the battlefield, you're allowed to grab two more lands, uh, which just then allows the ramp process to keep going faster and faster and faster. Um, also, or, no... They are any lands, not basic lands, yeah. and it also triggers when it attacks. Absolutely. This allows us to do the Valakut lines for basically bolting our opponent to death. This allows us to grab Field of the Dead to basically eliminate, basically just create a board of zombies that no one can deal with. Also allows us to, if we if we see Ink Moths becoming the problem, we can grab a Wasteland. That's one of the biggest ones that I've seen a lot in the Legacy uh, play is uh, grabbing um, Wasteland to just get rid of the Ink Moth Nexuses. And we do see a Wasteland here immediately from uh, Argon, but we are going to see a Once Upon a Time first over the stack at that. I do like grabbing the Noble here, allowing them to set up a turn of just yeah. starting to ramp themselves. Yes, I agree. And then, yeah, we did see the Wasteland <laughs> there. Uh, looks like... Okay, so there are still three wastelands in the main deck anyway, so not yeah. necessarily board. Yeah. Um, so we are going to see the trop into a noble here. I think that's the right play. Um, double wasteland and a chalice. Chalice. Chalice so, on one. Yeah, I think you definitely fight over this if you're alone for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Same position of seeing that um, Trinosphere come in, but th that's going to resolve. Oof. That's going to be really tough for Lone to deal with here. 
Um, yeah. Yeah, Mike, we're definitely working on getting that tracker over there. We don't usually use it a lot, so we're, we're adding on really as, as quickly as we can here. Our wonderful uh, stream host here, Mr. Jack Dex, working his butt off to add everything we need on this uh, on this stream. Yeah, looks like we're getting a glistener elf into the chalice. Yeah. Like, the best thing about chalice is if you have, you should still play the cards, because you're, if your opponent misses a chalice, then that's their fault, not yours. Yeah, that's with the uh, change in the ownership of triggers rule, like what happened with Tabernacle and stuff like that a couple of years ago, isn't that? Absolutely. Um, so as Chalice um, Chalice reads that um, whenever a player casts it, counter that spell. Not that the spell can't be played. You must trigger the Chalice to counter that spell. Um, yeah. So if you are playing fast enough or if your opponent is not really paying attention, you can play a one-mana spell. And if your opponent doesn't deal with it, then it's it's there. It becomes a missed trigger. Hmm. Interesting. And so we're going to see that they're going to keep trying this here. And yeah, trigger Chalice, put the Glistener up into the bin. I think it's a smart play from Lone to try his hardest to do it. And then we are going to see the Wasteland targeting the Ink Moth Nexus there. Yeah. We did see a Field of the Dead come in from uh, Argon there. Did not realize that that came in. End of Valakut. Wow. The land so the clock place. The clocks are on now for Lone here with two win conditions on the field already. And I know that we're only seeing a possible one or even two copies of uh, Wasteland here from uh, uh, from our Infect player, from Lone. Yeah. Yeah, we, we only see one copy in the main deck of uh, Wasteland for our... Uh, for loan here, because those yeah. two cards can become a huge problem if not dealt with quickly. Yeah, I find it interesting how Lone actually wasted the wasteland, and it looks like Argon didn't fire back unless it was tapped. Oh, if you've, yeah, got, believe... a, if you've got a second ink cloth in hand, I totally get why. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's the right play there. Um, you have to be at this point. Lone has to be faster. Um, there is yep. no, there is a clock ticking, and you can see it. Their names are Field of the Dead and Valakut. Indeed. There's, there is nothing scarier than seeing your opponent knowing they could have Dryad in hand. They could have, once Dryad comes into play, Field of the Dead and Valakut are online, and it becomes very, very spooky. Hilariously, though, we see red and black and colorless, but we do not see green. Yeah, absolutely. No green on Argon's side of the board, but I think Argon's still in a really good place here. Um once we start seeing their plays. Yeah. So we are going to see an Exalted Trigger here from the Noble, since uh, Ink Moth Nexus is uh, attacking by themselves. So we do have two Infect damage on the board here for um, for Lone, starting the clock. Yeah. Just got to do it four more times. <laughs> Definitely. And and I that's one of the things that I actually like a lot about... Um about Legacy Infect compared to Modern Infect, is there's a lot of times where you can just activate the ink moth and then just crunch with an exalted trigger and you're good just taking five turns getting there that way it's not like in modern where you have to be pumping all the time because you don't have as much permission right you're not able to just sit back on your hand yeah absolutely and we are going to unfortunately see that argon is draw passing here um going up to eight cards in hand argon draws moves to discard here we're not seeing any green coming out of argon's side here and this is giving Lone the ability to just swing in with this Ink Moth Nexus to just put the pressure on. Yep, looks like we're getting another crunch there. And if this yeah. connects, I'll put the Infect up to six. Yeah, we're already up to six Infect Ooh. here. Invigorate, that'll put it up to that'll put it up to four, and it looks like we got a counter spell. Yeah, he shows double force here. Uh, is there anything you can do here? And I think that's it. I think that I might think just be game here. Game. I think we're just going to kind of just see what the players had in hand. Yeah. Um, yeah, just no green source for um, Argon there. Wow, that's rough. Yeah, unfortunate. But, um... Well played by Taker, though. That was a very blisteringly fast match. Yeah, very, very fast game. Um, yeah, that was super, super spooky for... Um, uh, Super, super spooky for Lone there, having to deal with a Trinisphere in Game 1 and a uh, a Chalice on 1 in Game 2. Unfortunate for Argon just to not find any green source. He had everything he needed if he had a green source there. Definitely. Yeah. 
Invigorate so, is also such a good pump spell as well because you, know, uh, you don't have to pay mana for it, and you you give your opponent life, which as an infect deck you could not care less. Yeah, absolutely. Um, like I said, I've lost to Lone enough times where he always seems to have the answer he needs. Double force there to show uh, that that card's not coming out there. Uh, that card's not getting away. Yeah. But, um, we want to thank you guys so much for hanging out with us tonight. Uh, some quick magic, some slow magic, but sometimes it's the best magic, and that's all you need sometimes. Uh, yeah. My name's Pope. I was joined by Adam. Hopefully catch us next, catch us on Saturday when we have our Saturday uh, tournament. Uh, our finals are always hanging out here on Twitch. And then next Tuesday, we have the League Semi and Finals next week. Yes, so that will be... Uh, we have the players currently about to start up in the top eight. Uh, that has been finalized now, so they need to play their quarterfinal round. And then we will be streaming both semifinals and the finals next Tuesday. So that'll be good, and hopefully I have my microphone fixed by then or someone <laughs> else sitting in this spot. <laughs> But yeah, guys, thank you guys so much for hanging out with us tonight. We hope you guys have a great night. Let us be your local meta, and we'll see you guys soon. Thank you. Have a good one.